Hey there, thank you for joining me for today's practice. My name is Paula. So today is an inner thigh focused practice and you might want to have a blanket nearby or set it up underneath you just for when we come down to the ground. Sometimes people's knees get a little bit sensitive just being down um, in a couple of the positions. So feel free to have that nearby and then let's make a start. So we're going to start standing and let's just bring the feet hip distance apart. Bring the palms, the hands together, closing down the eyes when you're ready. Just starting to take a few deeper, easier breaths. Allowing the muscles of the face to relax. Shoulders falling away from the ears. And let's gently open up the eyes, releasing the arms down by your side and opening the feet out into a wide position here. Toes uh, turn slightly out. So when we come down, knees are going to track over towards that second toe. So your toes might be pointing slightly forward. So don't over rotate them out depending on your hip rotation capacity. Taking the arms out to the side, taking an inhale. As you exhale, bending through the knees, crossing the arms and then taking another in-breath to come all the way up, arms up over the head, and then exhale, bending through those knees, press the knees back, and then inhale, stretch it up, reach the arms up. And again, bending through the knees, crossing the arms, a little deeper bend as before you come up, and we'll just do that one more time, bending through the legs, and then inhale. And then exhale, coming down into your wide-legged goddess pose. You can just place the hands onto the thighs. You might stay a little bit upright. Just see how your hips are feeling at the moment. If you can, maybe sinking down a little bit lower. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. It's taking a little sway from side to side. Keep the breathing nice and easy. and then just coming back to centre. Letting the hands slide a little bit further down the thighs, tilting the torso forward, and then taking a twist to your left. So looking over that left shoulder, rotating the hands so the fingers are pointing downwards, pressing that right thigh away to open up the legs as you twist. Take one more inhale, stay for the exhale, and then inhale through centre. Let's go the other way. Looking over the right shoulder, using that left hand to press that left thigh away. Lifting the belly button away from the mat. And then coming back to centre, we're going to bring the hands all the way down and then rotate the feet to your parallel position here. If you need blocks or something here, feel free to use blocks. If you can, palms and hands go all the way down and toes are pointing forward. And then from here, we're just going to shift the weight into the right leg, bending into that right knee, keep pressing down through the outside edge of that left foot. And then swapping it over, bending into that left, left leg. If you need to walk your hands a little bit further over as well, feel free to do that. And this time we're pressing down through the outside edge of that right foot. And then swapping it over, bend into the right. And come through centre, go to the left, last one and then coming back to centre. Taking an inhale to reach the sternum forward, reach the crown of the head forward, and as you exhale, starting to walk the hands back in between the feet, just to where you can. And just depending on how your body is, you might need to walk your feet in a little bit further if the crown of the head is quite close to the ground. Lifting the shoulders away from the ears. Let the weight shift forward onto the balls of the feet. And we're not going to go for a super strong prasarita padutanasana or wide-legged pose here just because it's still very early um, in the practice. But just letting the spine release here. And then walk the hands back out. Imagine your torso and arms is in your down facing dog. So quite long through both sides of the waist. 
And then I'm going to just widen my legs again. I'm going to bend into that right, right knee. Take that left arm, thread it under the right and try to hold the outside of that right calf. And then we're going to start to straighten into that right leg, twisting the body to the right, looking underneath that right upper arm or armpit. The left hip is going to want to drop down. You want to try to lift that left hip up. You're trying to open up through the middle part of the upper back in between the scapulas. You can imagine the hands in between the upper back. You're trying to press into that hand as you turn the shoulders to the right. One more full breath. And then releasing back to centre for a moment and then walking the hands around towards that right leg, coming into your sprinter's lunge position and then we'll just drop down into that left knee, release the top of the left foot down. You can stay on the fingertips or plant the hands down. And just taking a couple of breaths here. Just allowing that left hip just to gently sink down towards the mat. And then let's kickstand this left foot behind. So we're going to start to walk the hands around towards the front or the side of the mat, I should say. And then walk this right foot out a little bit further away and line up that right heel with the left knee. So we're going into our uh, half bekasana or half frog. I'm going to open out this left knee a little bit. So this is somewhere where you might want to use your blanket if you're feeling a bit sensitive in the knees. This could be plenty for you and you could just hold it here press down through the outside edge of that right foot. And for some of us, maybe coming down a little bit further, you can press the palms of hands together. If it feels available, you might start to let that left knee slide out a little bit, but keep actively pressing down through the outside edge of that right foot. And we activate through the outside of this right leg, so we're just not collapsing down to the lower back, yeah? So we're still lifting up through the lower belly a little bit. Starting to shift the hips a little bit further back if you've got some space. And let's just hold it here for a few breaths. Trying to soften on the exhale. And then coming back up onto the hands, if you're a bit further down, and then carefully just starting to shift your way back into your low lunge position, tucking the back toes under, lifting the back knee off, and then rotating around towards the front into your wide-legged uh, pose once again. Line up those heels, walk the hands out so the torso is long, as if you're in your down-facing dog position here and then bend into this left knee, thread the right hand under, taking the hold of the outside of that left shin and then we're going to start to straighten into that left leg, lifting that right hip up, rotating the shoulders to the left this time. Try to smooth out the breathing. And then let's release that right hand for a moment and then continue to walk your hands around towards that left leg, coming into your sprinter's lunge and then dropping down to that right knee. Drop onto the top of that right foot. Just taking a few breaths here. Letting go of any unnecessary effort. And then let's kickstand this right lower leg behind, walking around towards the side of your mat and then opening out that left leg a little bit wider, lining up that left heel with the right knee and maybe opening out that right knee a little bit more as well. Once again, feeling free to stay a little bit more upright. 
and maybe coming down for some of us, actively pressing down through the outside edge of that left foot. Find your breath. And as we stay here, you might be able to just slide out that right knee just a little bit. Just see, just be very mindful, very gentle here. Maybe shifting the hips slightly back as well. And then let's come back up onto the hands very carefully, mindfully, rotating back towards that left leg, coming into your uh, low lunge and then tucking the back toes under, lifting that right knee off, walking your hands around to the side of the mat, feet are parallel and we're going to come down onto one shin and then the other shin, release the tops of the feet down, coming into your Japanese seated position for a moment. Just take a couple of breaths, cupping that left hand into the right, Tips of the thumbs lightly touching. And close the eyes. Just noticing any of that residual sensation from the work we've been doing. And then let's open up the eyes. Coming back up onto the knees and remembering this is somewhere where you could have your knees on a blanket. Tucking the toes under. So knees are a little bit wider than hip distance apart. We're just gonna open up through the front of the body a little bit before we go into our full Bekasana, full um, wide-legged frog. Take the hands to the waist. Use your thumbs to try to drop the tailbone down and shift the hips forward, puffing open the chest, Squeeze the elbows in, lifting the chest up towards the ceiling and you, this might be plenty for you. If you'd like to go a bit further, we're gonna drop the hands down to the ankles and you can have the thumbs on the outside. Press the chest forward, maybe letting the head drop back. Hips keep pressing forward. And then bringing the hands back to the lower back to return. Bringing the knees back in, coming back into your Japanese seated position for a couple of breaths. And then opening up the eyes. And then coming forward onto your hands, and we're going to set up for our wide-legged frog position. Just flexing the feet, lighting up the heels and the knees. Just opening out to where it feels comfortable. And we're trying to keep that line, the hip and the knees in line here. And you might stay upright, just find the breath, or maybe coming a little bit further down. And just holding here. Quite a strong pose for many of us. So really using your breathings to make that rising sensation. Like using a little bit of core strength, so lifting through the lower belly to support the pose. But at the same time, you might find that the longer you stay here, you might be able to, the knees might start to open out just a little bit more. Release the jaw. Relax the shoulders. Three more full breaths. And if you need to come out, you can absolutely come out whenever you need to. And then very gently, we're going to come back out again. So coming back up onto the hands, if you're down, start to bring the feet together and then walk the knees back in together. 
And just last time, let's take our Japanese seated position for a moment. You just place the palms and hands down, closing down the eyes. And then opening up the eyes, sitting over to one side and then bringing the legs out in front of you. We're going to go into our Gomukhasana. So bringing that left leg underneath and then trying to bring that right leg and bringing it all the way over if you can. Now, if this feels impossible for you, you could sit up on a blanket or a block, sometimes that helps, or alternatively, you could extend the bottom leg long and take that variation. Otherwise, trying to have both sitting bones down on the mat as much as you can, lengthen up through both sides of the waist, taking an inhale. As you exhale, start to walk the hands forward. Just coming down to where you can. So we've worked with opening up the inner thighs for most of the practice. And we're just going to close just with the outer hips, you want to contain everything. Just allow the breathing to slow right down. Let's walk the hands back upright. And then taking that left hand away, right arm up and over, keeping that right sitting bone dropping down. Relax the left shoulder away from the ear, looking up towards the ceiling. Just breathing into that right side body, maybe the eyes turning to look up towards the ceiling or eyes closed. And then taking an inhale, coming back upright. And then let's swap it around. You just bring the hands behind you. So you lean back, right leg underneath, left leg on top and trying to bring that left leg as far over as you can, trying to stack knee to knee. Remember that option to extend that bottom leg out if you would like to. Take an inhale, grow out through the waist and then as you exhale, walking the hands forward. Noticing if there's anywhere you can soften. Last couple of breaths here. And then walking the hands back up, taking that right hand away from the hip, taking the left arm up and over, dropping that right shoulder down, pressing down through that left sitting bone as you open up through that left side body. And then taking an inhale, coming back upright, releasing the legs out, extending the legs out long and coming down onto your back. Is there any final moves you'd like to do before your Shavasana? Please feel free to take it. Make sure you're nice and warm. When you're ready, letting the feet fall away from one another, arms a bit away from the body, palms facing up, closing down the eyes. With each exhale, completely surrendering the weight of the body. Just relaxing the back of the neck. Allowing yourself to rest here. 
for the next few minutes. Please feel free to stay resting here for as long as you would like to. Thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste.